Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another Tektronix oscilloscope. This one is called TDS420. It's a four channel digital oscilloscope and it will uh, handle 150 megahertz, 100 mega samples per second. And I bet the 100 mega samples is only one channel at a time, right? And if you're doing four channels, it's going to be, of course, a lot slower. But one channel can do 150 megahertz. And if you're doing this, you need a repeated signal to draw the curve on your screen. So that is what I want to test. If you look real careful, let's have a little look here. I mean... This scope looks like it's brand new. So this tells me something probably <laughs> is blown up inside because nobody used this scope forever, man. Look at that. We have no scratches on the screen either. And on the knobs here, we don't have any dirty fingers or anything. It's just amazing. And this one comes with this auto detect for different probe types. See, you got the connectivity down here for your probe connector. And by adding different resistors and stuff like that, you can tell the scope if it's a times one or times 10 or times 100 or current probes or all those fancy things. It supports all of that. So it's a very modern uh, oscilloscope. Well, <laughs> it is from 1991. At least that is the design release. So on the front, we have a soft power on off. And on the back, we have the hard power on off. So this is a mains switch. And it says, wow, 240 watts. That is crazy. I hope it's not using that much. External trigger right there. And uh, I got uh, two plug-in options here. Video, VGA compatible connector for an external, probably a color screen or something like that. So I got to go and find a cable. Let's have a look if that work. And of course, we got the IEEE connector here for remote measurements and all that. So I think I'll try and uh, find a screwdriver and uh, do my visual inspection before I power this up. I got good news and I got bad news. Ah, yeah, that is so bad. So this this is the this is the first picture I got when I opened the scope. I was looking at this, wow, how nice and how clean and look at that. It's all beautiful. And we got, here's the circuit board that's handling all the CRT interfacing. That is, of course, the graphic stuff we need for that. Deflection amplifiers and all that kind of stuff. And that's just the power supply here that's doing... Uh, all the different voltages and all the stuff we need and that one is nice and clean and then I looked a little bit deeper into the thing and then I find here this tiny little capacitor here puked all over the place and everything is let me see if I can get this shot everything is corroded around that tiny little capacitor right there that's only one, okay? So then I, I'm looking here at this side. And I can, of course, see something really funny. we got a missing screw here. So somebody was in here and they didn't even bother to put in the screw. And uh, that is, this is, I think, the one of the main CPUs. So this is not an option. This is a, something you need to have because that cable here goes to the front panel. And you obviously need that one. But isn't it funny, you have a little seven segment display right there. Why would you have that? And here is a, what is that? A thick film 
chip or something like that. That's of course the graphic interface. That should be an option, right? Because it's not connected to anything else. But it's a graphic card. Uh, so there is a flat cable going to all the display sections. So I mean, this one you need to have all the time as well. And there you have the CPU master brain with all the big chips and goody goodies. Now, of course, I have to take all this out and have a look. And here is the bottom of the whole unit, the big main board and the input section board. And now I see immediately corrosion here and right here. And again, all this is caused by the small capacitors. So I was looking at different angles and I see, oops, over here, it's still wet. We got some drops of wet stuff. And I know this has not been outside in the rain. So those drops, they are splat splat from the capacitors and they splat all the way up here. And I tried to touch this with my fingers. I don't know if you can see some, some fingers. I touched this and then I smelled it and it was definitely capacitor puke all over the place. It's a little bit difficult to see because a lot of it actually dried in as well. But why is it flying out of the capacitors and, you know, flying far away and hitting parts? I don't know how far away it's. That is a little bit amazing. How can it splat fly? Normally I just see it drip drop a little bit out of the side, but it's, look at that. It's full of acid puke all over the place. So that means I am never ever going to get this unit up and running because this is completely out of my scope when it comes to the time and investment I can put into this. But I got a friend who is into old oscilloscopes like exactly this one. And you've seen this a little bit when he's swapping stuff at my place and he's Oh, can you, I really want this and uh, can I maybe one day, can you, when you do this, play with this, I want to have it. So, yeah, I think, I think he's just going to have it as it is because this is going to be something with, um, I will not turn this on because everything needs to be taken completely apart. All those capacitor needs to go out. Every little area needs to be cleaned very, very good, good. And then new capacitors and new everything, and then hopefully it will run, but I really don't know. So this is the IEEE and CPU card. It says up here, CPU. This is one of the batteries. And it goes to this section. Here's something really funny. So they added this area of some silicone and they put in, can you see some transparent goopy de goop in here? This is some soft silicone. And here is a crystal and uh, clock date chips so for low leakage everything is up here the cpu is a motorola 68020 wow cool some of you can probably remember this from the amiga 1200 and that one is from uh, what is that 92 it also says uh, 92 up here. We've got some programmable chips, uh, tons of flash. So I guess the program memory is here, right? In 16 bits. And then we got all the memory up here. And the, the layout is a little bit untraditional the stack up here, we got two signal layers and then two power planes and then two signal layers again. So it's a six layer board 
And that is what I can see from here, at least. Quite, uh, yeah, quite modern uh, layout and all that. Oh, it's running 32 megahertz. And here is the graphics adapter with the external VGA connector. Yeah, we've got 32 and 25 megahertz crystals. we got a little bit of uh, PAL programmable chips. And uh, that is, of course, the graphics memory. That's uh, probably an 80 converter, right? And see, again, one of those terrible leaked capacitors. And here it seems like it's only doing the drop in this way. It's probably because I always put scopes on the back. So that means gravity pulls this way, right? This one can be fixed. And then there is this cable here. And this goes obviously to the screen and here's the back panel with a lot of additional power supplies capacitors and filters and all that kind of stuff and i didn't see any leaked uh, capacitors here on this board so um, that's pretty good and it's of course because they're not using any of those uh, crappy capacitors so let's have a look at this one what is that doing well, there was another thing that that uh, tricked me a little bit. Those back panels here, see, there's another extra screw. And that one locks those back panels. They, this looks a lot like a PC plug-in, and it is definitely the same design. This is also the same design as an ISA PC. Uh, the ISA connector is uh, looking very, very similar, so it's the same mechanical layout but of, of course you cannot plug this into a pc it's all obviously gonna blow up you can see here's a completely different pin layout they're doing the connections they're different right but that screw is also tricksy tricksy this board is the dsp board and it says here with loud and clear text so there's of course the nice and fine DSP there. Got a little bit of memory chips. Also here we got some memory chips. And uh, that is another battery, another timekeeping device. And then SRAM battery backed up. And then SRAM we don't care about. Hmm. Yep, that's how it is. And uh, we're lucky this board doesn't contain any of those uh, bad capacitors. So the layout is from 91. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see the layout is two layers, two signal layers, and then ground plane. And then the trick is to have the signal layers horizontal and vertically. This way you can uh, yeah, route all the things. And also you don't have any crosstalk, or at least as little as you can, you can have using this stack up. I kind of don't like this uh, type of stack up, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, but that is how they did it right here. So before this thing goes to storage, before I can give it to someone else, I try to go around and clean at least all the wet and all the corrosion away and neutralize it a little bit. Oops, I can see I forgot a little bit right there. So, yeah, I just clean around all the capacitors and mark them so they're easy to to see and then um, 
over here I was doing all the cleaning so the so the acids from those four capacitors here dissolved also the soldering so this resistor is now lying right there so I need to go and see if I can measure it if there is still anything in that one so I could probably figure that out but it is I mean a very very sad sight to see um, a very special brand of capacitors uh, leak like that so uh, 33 micro 10 volt we also got some smaller ones and they also leak these yeah there's a terrible smell in here by the way uh, so this leak just yeah nasty nasty smell but it's a beautiful analog front end so that is of course the the front end unit oh it's quite easy to open all you have to do is bend this one then you can see uh, we got some relays and a custom amplifier chips and uh, all this of course completely software controlled uh, all the gain stages and everything like that so you got four gain stages and signal path and the signal goes through this little interconnect here and it's of course a, a balanced uh, amplified system and the you can see we've got two signals here and they're all matched to the same length because of timing and then I believe we got uh, this is also an amplifier and driver and that will be the analog to digital converter and that goes into the memory controllers here and that will be all the local memory where you store the waveforms as fast as possible and as parallel as possible and then transfer it and display it nice and slowly so that's basically how it's doing this i was lucky to be able to measure that resistor before it breaked <laughs> and I added a little note here. So now I can remember to, uh, to put in a new one. That is so cool. I haven't yet given up. So I took out the big board here and I marked all the caps and I cleaned it uh, as much as I can to begin with. Here is also a cap. So this board is also out. This board we got those four. But when I lifted this up to access this screw, oops, I find two more. And now comes the fun part. I want this board out so I can service it, but um, hmm, not that easy. So I had to take away the front plastic cover. And behind this cover, we can now see the menu buttons here. So there's a thin, thin plastic film here on this aluminium. We also got some more here. There's another film right there and i believe those four screws will let me pull down the input board and probably i need to desolder something i don't know yet so that is definitely the trick and out comes the entire input board and like i said a little bit earlier this is the fantastic thick film input boards and amplifier and all that so of course this is the amplifier part and uh, here in the front we got all the relays for the different ranges and uh, fantastic things. So the entire right front panel assembly comes out in one go like that. And there's this little plastic flippity flip here. You push this one and then it hinge out like this. There are two little plastic things down here that grabs. And then see, out we go. And now I need to be real careful with all those flat cables and stuff. And the reason why I want to go in here, that is because I got some more nastiness right here, some more capacitors. So this board here also needs some deep, deep fixing.
Yeah, it's definitely down here. It's uh, worst. Oh, this is not good. Look at the corrosion of this U400. Ooh, is that a missing pin up there or something? Because if that is the case, then I have no way to continue here. And that will be... Yeah, we've got tons of switches. Yeah, there's probably a way to get this board out here. Oh, yeah, here we go. These little flip flaps here holds this board. And then what? Oh, one more. Are we done yet? So that's actually pretty cool. Some of the encoders there incorporated like that, and some of the other encoders there like that. And look how good it is that I take it all apart. See all the slime here? There's also capacitor slime. And it goes all the way through the board. See, drip drop here. How bad is that? For such tiny little baby-sized capacitors. See, it's even wet here. See, capacitor slime all over the place. Ew. I don't know if this is going to be mission impossible or what. I just try to um, take away one of the capacitors here. And it's just impossible to solder on it. No matter how much I clean it and fix it, the capacitor is like beyond repair, the pins. So the acid kind of affects or pollute the solder. And I, it really took me, I don't know how long, to resolder and resolder and clean and clean and resolder and then clean it all the way down to here and it's still really really bad to solder on these i mean it looks like it's nice and clean but when i try and put solder on these it's just don't stick it, it's not working but it's a little bit nice and shiny but it's i think it's impossible to video this but there's something wrong with the surface Hey, how annoying. It's just impossible to solder on this shit. So I think I will end this video with a sad, sad message. I spent quite a lot of hours removing all the capacitors. And that is how many I have removed. That is all of them. And um, the problem is not just the capacitors. The problem is, if you look a little bit, oh, I'm sorry, it's difficult to focus on this. We got this capacitor here, we got some other capacitors there, but with the, the VS in this area, the acid goes into the VS, and this is a six layer circuit board. So when I measure on those tracks that's supposed to be connected to a VIA, then the VIA goes into the board, I will, can of course look at the other side. You can see some VS here. So those VS, that is a little solder blob on the VS. That is only on the bottom side. So that means the solder blobs here are not on the top sides of the VS. So they're open. So that means acid puke from the capacitors goes into the open Yes, some of them are nicely closed, as you can see here, but it's far from all of them. And the ones around the capacitors and the tracks under here, sad to say, the acid can go down there. And now I don't have any connections to inner layers. And it's, of course, a all the boards, there are six layer uh, boards, by the way. And now I don't know exactly what to do about this, because all of my boards they have the same problem. See, VS located here, very close to that capacitor. Of course, I I couldn't even bother to clean this splat splat uh, away because here is a broken connection again. But here it looks like it could have been this 
big I don't know what the heck to do about this all my boards they have this all over the place so I think I just wasted two or three days um, playing around with this but it was um, not funny to be honest <laughs> I really wanted this to work because it's a really really sexy oscilloscope but uh, that is just not um, how it's supposed to be today so uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, I don't know if there will be a part two of this one so far. So here's the video I actually didn't plan to publish, but since this one is definitely going to uh, the trash can anyway, because of all the broken tracks that I found, I might as well just have a little fun after all. So let's try and power it up with all those capacitors missing. <laughs> I mean, it's a whole handful of capacitors I just took out. And I mean, we got all sorts of broken um, yeah, connections. So here we go. Mains is applied and it's using 140 watts. And there is actually, what the heck? I did not expect it to power up like this. And it's of course going. What on earth? It's still using 146 watts. And it seems to be alive. What the hell? <laughs> so I will definitely go and get some capacitors and see if I can get this uh, spinning again. Hallelujah. That is funny. So here is a uh, one kilohertz input signal and I click the auto set. No. Nah. Of course nothing works here. And that is of course one of the boards with the missing tracks and uh, broken things. So that means we have of course nothing running here on the front. Nah. Let's see if this one works of course. Ooh, and standby power is 4.7 watts.